Bible class. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, we are in the midst of a series of messages on the one another's uh, in the Bible. Uh, as I've been sharing with you, I believe that the Christian life is uh, not to be lived alone, not to be lived isolated, but we are to live it together. And there are some 50 plus uh, passages that encourages us to do things with one another, for one another, by one another. And I've been sharing with a few of them in the last uh, month or so. And today, uh, as we've talked about loving one another, honoring one another, uh, being compassionate toward one another, serving one another, forgiving one another, and a couple of others, uh, today I have a panel of our ministers of our church that's going to ask some questions of me uh, regarding those, those subject matters, uh, kind of representing perhaps what the church members would ask or uh, in that regard, just to give some further depth to the subject matter that we've been sharing with um, over the last several weeks. Allow me to introduce uh, them from uh, the furthest away to those, the one nearest to me, the one furthest away is Reverend Daniel Ridgeway. Uh, next to him is uh, Pastor Darrell Red Campbell. Uh, next to him is Minister Ronnie Glass. And next to me is uh, Uncle Joe. They call him over in Africa, uh, Reverend Joe uh, Williams. And I'm honored to have y'all brother and Sharon with, uh, with me today and to ask questions regarding um, these verses of scripture, these one another's of the Bible. Uh, it really is a challenge, you know. It's easy to love God uh, himself or by himself, uh, but to love God and his people uh, is really the challenge. And so that's why I think there's so many one another's in the Bible for us to challenge us to try to live out our faith. So I'm here uh, to answer questions and engage in dialogue, and so I'm throw it out to you, brethren, and we might even get into some band talk, seeing there's all brothers here. Um, but Brother Joe saying you got the mic in your hand, I'll let you go first. Um, what question you have for me? Uh, thanks, CG. And uh, yeah, so uh, my, my question is uh, covered the first lesson in the series. And uh, the topic of that lesson was loving one another. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple faced person. Um, so, my question is, is pretty, pretty practical. Uh, and it goes to the, uh, and, and, you know, you talk about one another, mm -hmm. right, uh, throughout the series. Uh, so, my first question is um, who is the other, right, in, in, in the church? We can be kind of clicky. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Us, us four and no more. Mm -hmm. Right? Or, you know, we, we just might think about only people in our particular congregation. Yep. The Bible talks about one another. Mm -hmm. Who Who's the other? If I could uh, do my preacher thing and give you another Bible context. You know, when um, uh, you, that, that question sounds like the question that. Uh, the fella asked Jesus about who is my neighbor. And uh, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan or the priest and the Levite that passed by the man that was on the road and needed help. Uh, but the one that was his neighbor was the one, well, all of them were his neighbor because they came where he was. And the one who really uh, took time to help him proved to be his neighbor. Uh, and I think the others that we are to one another with are those that cross our paths. Uh, those that, that come across our path daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, I don't believe there's accidents or coincidence with people crossing my path as I believe that I'm here, like you're here for divine purpose. And I think too often we let uh, angels and opportunities to favor God, bless God, show God. We let those pass by because we don't think of the person passing us by as one of those others. And so the one anothering could be any believer, because he's speaking to believers, 
could be any believer. The challenge, of course, is that you just can't look at somebody and tell if they're a believer. Uh, uh, it takes more than just a Bible under their arm, a cross around their neck, and a suit or a dress on, uh, or even them coming from a church house. And so the, the one anothering is uh, loving people, expressing the best of God uh, to people who cross your path, seeking what's best for them, doing what's best for them, to the best of your ability. Whether you like them or not is not the issue. It's we're challenged, we're called to love those who cross our path. Right. And, you know, and even though that question was asked to Jesus by the Levite over 2,000 years ago, I think it's still relevant. Oh, yeah. You know, you know we're still dealing with that. And, you know, Jesus knew that we would be dealing with it. So, and you, uh, your, your uh, take was that uh, any believer. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that the one another extend outside of the Christian community? I th you know, the guy on the road, yeah. you know, he was a Samaritan. Yes, I, I think uh, because the Spirit of God led the writers to write to one another uh, knowing that we are not good judges of men's hearts and motives. Uh, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, legalistic people uh, who barely make it into heaven going to be really surprised to see who all get in there. And Because we can't judge people from the outside, as I was saying earlier, whether or not they are Christians or not. So then whether I know you are a Christian, my Christian brother or not, I still should treat you as a brother. It's like going to a family reunion, a huge family reunion. You don't know all those people there, but because we're all in this community together, we have to assume that there's some connection there, there's some relationship there. And so we should treat one another as we are family. We should love one another. We should serve one another. We should uh, forgive one another. Uh, regardless of what we may look on the outs look like on the outside, but because we happen to be in the same uh, house, in the same job, at the same church, how about this? We're in the same world, and so we are one another. So, so my my, my second and last question, you know, um, some of the other brothers asked questions, is the, the topic of that first lesson was was love. And uh, I appreciate, you know, how you broke, broke down the practical as, aspects of love. And, and so we know uh, probably one of the greatest treatises on love is 1 Corinthians 13. And it talks about love in some very practical ways, not just the emotional. Mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. We talk about the mm -hmm. emotional love and unfortunately so much the eros love, mm -hmm. the erotic part of love. But one of the first things that the Apostle Paul says is that love suffers long mm. in the King James Version. Mm -hmm. And I like, in that, I like the King James Version. So, um, you know, uh, um, and I think it was, uh, was it Frankie Beverly who said, <laughs> joy and pain? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, the sunshine yeah. and rain. Yeah, that was Prophet Beverly. So that's love. That was the great, <laughs> great prophet, Frankie Beverly, right? So. Um, and so love, you know, it, it suffers. It, so it, so it, 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 uh, it, it, it assumes that love suffers. Love yeah, hurts. Does. Yeah. So how do you encourage believers right, to, to take that step to love people? And we talk about the one anothering, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it includes a yeah. lot of people. Mm -hmm. When, when you know at some point it's going to cause pain and suffering? Well, um, when it says love suffers long, it's because that's part of love. It's patient. Uh, it put up with stuff that's uncomfortable. Uh, it, it put up with stuff that are uh, unpopular. Um, put up stuff that's heavy. And that's the side of love that we don't like to talk about. We want love to be fluffy duffy. We want love to be comfortable and cute and pretty. Uh, but sometimes um, love is, is not so pretty. That's the whole essence of Calvary. 
and Jesus on the cross. That was love at its highest uh, point. But it didn't look pretty to see him with holes in his hands and holes in his feet and blood ushering out of everything. That was not pretty, but yet that was the highest picture of, of love. And he stayed there when he could have came down. And so when it calls for us to love one another, it is to put up with one another, to carry one another, to um, endure one another, even when we don't want to, even when it's not pretty or comfortable or popular. Um, but love does some strange things. And if we question that, all we have to do is ask any loving parent of a child uh, that, uh, you know, anybody, anybody have a child under three, know that you, you can't always communicate well with that child. A child can't always communicate well with you. A child, you don't have to teach that child to say no. A child won't say no when it gets to the point, no, no. And the parent has to know that, okay, this child is learning some things and you got to carry, you got to put up with them, got to help train them. And then if they happen to be sick, you're going to carry them. I mean, you're literally going to carry them even to the point where they get heavy and you say, but this is my child, this is my baby. That's what love does. Well, I think uh, Jesus, God, the scriptures is encouraging us as believers to put up with one another, to, to love each other to the point that it is suffering. And if we happen to suffer, it don't mean a quick instant suffer. Okay, I feel the pain, let it go. No, he says suffer long. The old preacher said, when God says suffer long, he means just that, you're gonna suffer long. And so I mean, there's no timetable. We all wish we could put a timetable on pain, put a timetable on hurt, put a timetable on suffering, put a timetable on heartbreak and heartache. We don't, there's no timetable. All we know we do it a long time because whenever you're in it is a long time. But that's part of love that you gotta put up with stuff that you don't want to, don't feel good, don't look good, ain't called good at the time. But love covers a multitude of sins and love makes us uh, come out on the other side much better than it was when we went in. So good questions. Amen. I would love to jump in. Uh, and since we're talking about love and uh, my subject was serving one another mm -hmm. and you know, that's got a lot to do with love, love and serving. And then you said suffering too, um, suffering. Yep. In that, um, and our definition of serving one another, we separate it from just doing work. And then the question was, can we serve one another without working? Can we serve one another without working? What's your definition of working? You had a definition of working. It was in, uh, in, in the lesson. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was just in the separation between like, okay, working can be, working is one thing, but serving uh, was, you know, going beyond. And... Oh, I remember now yeah. where I, I spoke of working is simply producing, is laboring, yes. is going through the motion. Serving is more an attitude. Serving is seeking to fulfill the need of the individual that's there. Mm -hmm. And so your question is, can you work without serving? Yeah, yeah. And the answer is obviously yes. You can do things and your heart isn't in it, your mind isn't in it, you're simply producing a, a product. Then what you, about the opposite now? Can, can you, you serve without working? Um, only in the sense of you serving uh, in a mental capacity to kind of study something. Uh, uh, when a real servant mm -hmm. will study his, 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 his client and see what is needed. And so you can, you're serving them by watching them. And I, like uh, I use the term a waiter or waitress at, a, at a, a restaurant, they're watching you to see when you're done with your appetizers before they bring the entrees. Mm -hmm. And so they, they are working, they are serving you even though they haven't brought the next dish in yet. Mm -hmm. And so can we, can we serve one another without working? Uh, I think it's another level of working that all work isn't physical and isn't right on the spot that uh, as I'm meditating and thinking about what's the best way to get to her, what's the best way to help him out, what's the best way to help her grow through what she's going through, as I'm thinking about how I can serve her, 
I'm still working, you just can't see it right then. So I guess the answer to that is yes, you can serve uh, uh, without working physically, but mentally you can still be serving. Um, I'll jump in now. Um, so my lesson was lesson two. Um, let's let's do it together. Okay. Um, and let's do it together. You talked a lot about you know being compassionate towards one another and kind to one another. But my question is, how can I be passionate? and kind towards someone who's not that kind and passion toward me. That I do all I can to, you know, show them love and compassion and it's not being reciprocative back towards me. How can I go about continue doing that? Oh, that's not, uh, when, if I'm only kind to people who are kind to me, that's not really being kind, uh, that's working. That's um, doing something for, to get something back. Kindness is uh, an act of the heart that we want the other person to be comfortable, we want the other person to uh, feel served, we want the other person to feel favored. And whether they give it back to me or not is not the issue. If I'm only doing it to get something back, that's not kindness, that's just a labor of uh, a, a work that I'm looking to get paid for uh, later on. And, and uh, in our day and time, it's a lot of that where people really think that they are um, being kind because they speak to somebody, or better yet, they're being loving because uh, they do some loving towards somebody. But if you, if you give someone a gift, this is a good analogy, if you give someone a gift uh, for Christmas, uh, and your motive in giving them a gift uh, uh, Christmas is that um, they get something for you, then that's not really, that's, that's not really a gift. That's, that's a, a, a work of labor, an investment, if you will. And so kindness, like service, is something that comes from the heart seeking to better the other individual. Uh, seeking to minister to the other individual. I used to say the church was often um, guilty of, of scratching where people are not itching and then wanting folks to respond. And serving is, is, and kindness is realizing the area where the itch is and seeking to, to meet that need. And if they say thank you, fine. If they don't say thank you, Oh well, uh, because people are not going to always return kindness for kindness. They're, they're not going to do that. Um, and if we wait on them to do that, we're going to be very disappointed, very frustrated uh, in our lives. In fact, we will dummy down and stop doing the kind stuff ourselves because we are, watch this, we are allowing them to set the standard instead of him to set the standard about what kindness is and what serving is. And so we have to always maintain our level of service and kindness to be what he wanted to be. And that has to be a matter of the heart. And it's real hard, you know, at times to determine when someone is doing something just going through the motions and when it is a matter of the heart. So, good question. For me, for me, my uh, question, it, it's really funny listening to our conversation because I believe I got a lot of insight already into the answer to my question. Okay. And the question that I, I had is the one that in all the lessons that cut me the deepest. Mm -hmm. And it's being in bondage while you're serving. Mm. And I say that because the point that hit me the most in all the lessons you spoke in the lesson about what true freedom is. Mm -hmm. And you explained true freedom as sacrificial serving. Yeah. And a lot of times we want to serve in what I like, what pleases me, yeah. what makes me happy. And the, the core of my serving is me being pleased. 
And when the core of my serving is me being pleased, it didn't really, it doesn't really set me free because now I have all these obligations after I served, all these expectations after I served. And so my question is, can you describe for me in a practical way what this freedom is that you talked about in the lesson, that freedom in serving? Well, you know, this world always seeks to put us in bondage um, and hold us captive. Uh, our Savior, God's Son, Jesus came that we might be free. And to live free, to love free, to serve free, to be kind, free, to be compassionate freely. He came that we, we might be free. Um, and that freedom only comes when we totally surrender to him. And uh, Colossians 3.17 and 3.23 speaks to this issue about um, whatsoever you do in word or deed, you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, you do all to his glory. That whatever we do, if we're doing it as unto the Lord and doing it as to please him, not them, then we are free to serve. And if they say thank you, cool. If they don't say thank you, you weren't doing it for them for, in the first place. You're doing it for him. If they appreciate you, cool. If they don't appreciate you, cool. I was doing it for God anyway. I want to help them. I aim to please. I aim to serve. I aim to show God to them. One of the things that we'll be focusing in as a church next year is helping us to see how we are to show God to the world serve God in the world and share God with the world. But we have to show him to people who never seen him and people who haven't recognized him. And how do we show him? Jesus said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. So we show him by what we do. We serve him in the world by serving other people. And then we have to share him with the world. That the reason why I am the way I am, not because my mama did this or my daddy did that, not because I went to this school or I went to that church, but I am the way I am because God worked a change in my life. That Jesus saved me, the Holy Spirit lives in me, the word is alive in me. And so when we share God with the world, serving God in the world, we are showing God to the world. And so that becomes, you know, the real challenge for us. And, and really not so much the challenge, that becomes the liberating aspect of our lives. Well, we, we're liberated to, to wash floors, to wash feet, to, to serve in the most humblest compassion, you know, uh, considerate uh, areas we can serve. And we're free to do that. I'm no less of a man if I'm scrubbing the floor than I am standing on the mountain preaching uh, the word. I'm no less of a person if I'm taking out trash or cleaning off a sick person's body that's you know, full of decay or whatever. Uh, I'm serving and I'm free to do that. And I won't let the world, I won't let the devil, I won't let culture define me or redefine me because I'm free because Jesus set me free. I hope that answered your question, I dealt with it. Okay, now they're looking at me. So that's, that's all the questions. Well, I thank you all for some very, very, very good questions. Um, as we go forward, we're going to continue our, our One Another series at uh, the beginning of the year. We're going to pick back up and, um, and start the year off on unity as we go forward in 2024. Uh, but for right now, I hope these uh, questions and answers uh, help you as a believer, as a disciple, or as a disciple maker. Uh, I hope it helped you to become a better person and that you might get in the word and see how you could do some one anothering and how you can uh, help show God to the world. All right, thanks again to these wonderful men of God, uh, Reverend Joe Williams, Minister Ronnie Glass, Pastor Red, and uh, Reverend uh, Daniel uh, Ridgeway. God bless you, God keep you. Let's close with a word of prayer. 
God, how we love you. We thank you for not just loving us, but helping us to love one another, challenging us to be kind to one another, be compassionate with one another, be tenderhearted with one another, to forgive one another. We even deal with the forgiving part of one another today, oh God. So much could be said about that. That could be a class, again, all by itself. God, I thank you that you challenge us to show our love for you by showing our love to other people, by one anothering with others that cross our paths and saying we don't know their hearts. We can't always be judgmental about who we will be kind to and who we will not be kind to. In fact, the one another pastors never forbids us from being kind or nice or considerate to others who may not be of the faith. I thank you for that. Thank you for these lessons. Continue to open up our eyes that we may see the wonderful things in your word. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to bless the people uh, that call you God, call El Bethel their church, and me their pastor, and all who are listening in. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen and praise God. Amen. Peace.